Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Tuesday, November 30th, 2021. Another strange day in the markets today. Uh, the S&P, though, continues to follow current analysis. We did see an attempt uh, <clears throat> to move above where I had marked the high of that minute wave two at 46.69. That failed, and the market just started to tumble. And that was overnight on renewed fears about this new variant and its impact uh, around the globe. So the market initially dropped down as the start of this third wave began. And then it rallied back up, and this was pretty much right into our opening, put in a good showing, and that was on the basis likely of Tesla and Apple, both which have heavy weightings in the S&P. And once uh, the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, began speaking and talked about it might have an accelerated tapering, uh, the market just turned around and headed south and started to sell off pretty strongly. And that still fits within the current count that I'm using and that we're now dropping in a th three of three move. So a third of a third. It's a, it's a larger minor third. And then within that, we're in the third of three. So we're in the three of three. And then inside of that, that three of three also subdividing. So we're getting that little extra boost and that we're seeing today. And the low going right into the close was at 45.57. So it stopped right at support. And that support is based on the intermediate degree uh, wave, which I had taken off. No, actually on the S&P, I left it. <clears throat> and so that's on that base. So, so far on an intermediate degree level, this start of this decline has already reached uh, 0.382 of that uh, intermediate fifth wave. So I can, let me just show you that in more clarity. Just open this up to the floor. We see we have the retracements. So where we think this, this wave is gonna start to come. And basically I'm just tracking it where we can find support, not necessarily to finish this particular phase of the decline, but to give us ideas of where we might find a resting place, a turning point, et cetera, et cetera, as these waves continue to unfold. But even in here, if I pull this open, you can see that this is one, two, now this is minute one. So this third wave, it, in my view, continues to be very powerful and looks to be, it's going to really pan out. And this, this particular third, should likely come bring us all the way back down to 4,500, possibly even below, before we get a fourth wave rally and a fifth wave down, which will complete that larger minor third. So we've still got plenty of downside, I believe, to do. Now, how this plays out, because we're getting a lot of news stories about, and they're being termed as whales, the whales that are moving in um, to some of the larger Titan stocks that are in the NASDAQ. Today, it was Apple's turn. Apple ended up in a market that was down. Apple was up five. And it's options. It's options traders that are coming in and just really going after some of these higher strikes, which correspond with what's going to expire on Friday. So the push begins. Now, again, we saw that in Tesla today. We saw that in Apple today. They started it in Amazon, they started it in Google, but they got caught up when the market turned and that ended that folly. And I believe it also ended it in Tesla, at least for today. And so then it was all left up to Apple and Apple had a pretty powerful pull on both the NASDAQ and the S&P. Also, which came out after the market today is Salesforce's earnings which were not very well received. The stock's down about uh, 15 to $17 in the uh, aftermarket trading. 
So again, things are not looking spectacular for our markets. We've got this huge now gray cloud called coronavirus variant. And still as more and more information comes out, I think people will begin to digest and make decisions on what they believe they should be doing in terms of how the market will ultimately react. But when we get anything coming out of the Fed, which is going to concern interest rates and tapering, which was not supposed to begin until next year, which may begin this month, uh, well, tomorrow being December, the month of December, there's just a whole lot of, of bullishness that's going to get crushed in my opinion. But there are still many traders or investors or whomever that just don't believe it that the downside will prevail and that prices will continue to move lower as the market does move through this corrective phase. Back down to the hourly chart. What can we expect then for tomorrow? I think that every time we get one of these large sell-offs, we can see that the market tends to bounce, very strongly bounce. So right into that closing bell, market, the bell rings as market's getting in getting closing at 4562.50 and raises $20 after the bell rings. 20 SP dollars. That's a pretty big move to do on the bell. And so that's kind of what we're confronting now. Again, the volatility is still in intact, let's say. And that is counting for both sides. So as long as that continues, it can be very difficult to trade because many times you're not, I would not expect this type of a rush to buy futures when the market closes on a low and then turns and runs 20 bucks. Much of that was due to Apple tacking on uh, an additional dollar or more after the bell rang. Right now, Apple is a 166 bid at, at uh, 66.10 after closing at 65.30. So they're already, they boosted this all on its own after the bell. And that then gave us this rush. Apple has a heavy weighting in the S&P, heaviest weighting in the NASDAQ, but also has a pretty heavy weighting in the S&P. So <clears throat> the folly continues. What can we expect for tomorrow? The, the wave count itself is not very positive in terms of this upside just should get legs and just continue. But every time I feel that, the market tells me differently and it just decides to drop up or go up even further and beyond my expectations. So I can only really go on what is happening in the next hour or so. That's gonna be the best. So my best estimate for tomorrow would be continued downside. The market should continue to finish the wave pattern that it's now produced. Uh, only thing outside of that is once again, that this is A, this is a B, and we're gonna get a C wave up and it's all gonna just really be bizarre, but it would tend to be an acceptable pattern if it plays out. And it would just be a continuation of this wave two correction. Now, as strange as that all seems, that may be what is happening. But if not, then I would suspect that resistance will begin to take hold. Now, one thing I do want to put back is I do want to start to reintroduce downside projections. Come on, there you go. For uh, this third wave. And so that's 77.25. Let's take this up to there. So initially, the market really came down pretty, pretty quickly and almost got. To, uh, to what was normally termed the sweet spot, uh, which is just a Fibonacci 70.5%. And that's how it, it had dropped 
off of, you know, if we're measuring wave three to wave one. And so all of these are just resting points. These would not contain that move. Uh, the, the first one actually would be that wave three should be equal to wave one. And that's gonna come in again, right again at that 4,500 level. So 4,506. And more likely though, wave three would be expected to be 1.618 times the length of that first wave. And that's on the basis that wave three is often or most often the longest and the strongest wave out of a one, three, and five within an impulse uh, move. And <clears throat> this being wave three, it is subdividing, it is subdividing twice. So for as far as I can tell, this is one, two, one, two, and probably another one, two. So this is just continuing to subdivide in my view, and it's going to get very uh, speed and, and accelerating to the downside if this count proves to be what is actually in play right now. So I would expect continued downside. Again, upside should be limited, but when you have a lot of option traders and larger firms pushing into these Titan big stocks, Today was Apple, but we also know they can do it in Amazon. We also know they can do it in Google. They can do it in Facebook. They can do it in Netflix. They can do it in NVIDIA and in Tesla. All of them can be put into play for expiration. Tomorrow's Wednesday, then we have Thursday and Friday's expiration. First expiration in December. And they're already shooting that, that Apple, according to the options, they're looking for 167 and a half to 169 and so 170 is going to be out there as well and it just that's they come in and that's where they start pushing and the option trades are doing are causing you know the, the hedge is buying the stock so enough said in that case i am continuing to look for downside we have support at 45.54 45 uh, I'm going to say, come on, give me this one. 41, then 4,500, and then it breaks again to 4,468, 4,443, and that lines up with the 618 of that intermediate degree correction. And then we come down to where I think we can, with this third wave will finish, and that's at between 4,400 and 4,405 with spill. To the downside likely being contained down to 43.90. So in my opinion, the S&P has roughly another 200 points of downside before we get a more, a stronger bounce in the market. Now, what we might end up seeing here is this seemingly, even though that that came down, you know, we could see that this is just an, an A, a B, and then we're going to run up. Or for for I I don't know any other way to count it because of how it's trading. But you can see they're still walking in and they're buying up. They're buying it up, and as long as they're going to continue to do that in the Nasdaq, they're going to continue to buy it here because it's happening right here. Well, much to happen here, but here's my other suggestion because this is exactly how I need to trade this. You need to trade what's in front of you. You need to stay in the now. And what I mean is like if you get distracted, if you go and look at something else, or if you're not paying attention to what this market, the market that you've chosen to trade is doing, you're going to likely fall out of being in a rhythmic pattern with what the market's doing as buyers and sellers are moving in, you're going to likely miss a turn and then your day is just can be shot. Uh, I'm gonna to continue to say, do not be married to either side. Both are happening very quickly. You must stay open. This turn came right off of that high at 46.44 this morning. 
And it just, this is a one hour bar. And they took it down, that's 64, and they took it down to 583, from 664 to 583 in an hour. So it was a nasty little slap to bring everything down. And it happened very quickly. And the next thing you know, the Dow's down over 600, et cetera, et cetera. And the NASDAQ was down over 300. But they decided, nope, I'm going to buy it all back. And that's pretty much what they do. So how do you want to trade that? My encouragement would be to trade smart, to trade what's in front of you, to trade using the moving averages, to trade using the price action, to trade whatever uh, add-ons you can put in that's going to give you uh, like a point of control, the, the where support and resistance, so Elliott and Fibonacci, all in combination are going to help to put some parameters around the moves that are happening. In the meantime, have a great trading day. It's not that easy, at least today. There were moments where it was very easy, and, and so there was money to be made. But there were other moments where it was like it, it appeared that it was going to pick up a move in a particular direction, and you get a signal that it's going to do that, and boom, turns out a diamond just goes in the other way. So be alert. And that's where I'm going to leave it for today. The next update will be on Wednesday, December 1st.